Hi, this is Paul. I know at this point a lot of my regular viewers are no longer with us because why on earth would you sit and watch this stuff? Um, a lot of people just looking at 15 or 20 minutes of Senate are like, why, why, why watch these things? Well, have you ever watched this movie, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington? If you've never seen it, you should watch it. James Stewart is this is this guy brought into the Senate and he's 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 a true believer, and he's there, and he's going to shake up the system, and he's going to bend the rules, and he's not going to take no for an answer. And he, 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 gives, he gives a speech, and, and the whole world changes. Uh, if you've never seen Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, definitely see it. It's a great movie. And on the Senate floor this year, we very much had a Mr. Smith Goes to Washington moment and that's why I named this Reverend Vanderplug goes to synod because you don't see this often but it's it's a truly great moment in CRC synod history so I've shown this chart before to those who watch my channel to talk about uh, CRC membership decline and there's, a, there's an e missing in membership yes I know and this is something that we discuss on CRC voices fairly often David snapper has really followed close look at the numbers. We talked about the departure of some conservative churches in the 1990s. And, but the, the real issue as there was actually a, a presentation done by the, a guy who keeps careful statistics of the CRC. There are a lot of factors in terms of this and, but this is a reality. And so there was, a, there was an overture that came to Synod from Classis um, Southeast U.S., uh, championed quite likely by Scott Vanderplue. Scott has been descended quite a few times the last few years. I should pull up his picture. Scott, in fact, does have a YouTube channel that he uh, played around with uh, a few years ago. He had nine subscribers and four videos. And I met Scott during a... I met Scott during a an Inspire conference uh, that was the first one that they had, and I was a speaker there, and Scott was a speaker there. And I had heard about the growth in his local church, and I wanted to learn more about it. I wanted to learn what he was doing. I knew the pastor, the pastor before him at that local church was a colleague here in the Central Valley, and he was the church planter there. And it was a, you know, it was a reasonably successful church plant. And then Scott went there, and the, the church absolutely blew up. And Scott's method was a fairly standard, simple, personal discipleship program where you just start discipling um, people. And so he had this little video that he made. Every week I have the privilege of bringing God's word to his people. The people whom God brings to the place where I serve as the pastor. And there is one thing that I am absolutely intentional about every week as I prepare those messages. And that is that those messages are gospel-centered. About three years ago, I was introduced to the idea of gospel preaching using the outline of the basic gospel message. And let me tell you, that has transformed me not only personally, but also as a preacher. A couple of years ago, I began to do a few things differently in the way that I preach. And uh, one of those things was to orient my preaching much more towards gospel presentation. And that's been refreshing. Um, I have greater clarity on what's at stake in my preaching now than I did in years past. I'm not just filling heads with knowledge. Um, I'm moving hearts closer to Jesus Christ. After people became Christians in my church, um, I found that I was rather like a dog chasing cars. I had no idea what to do when I caught one. When somebody came to Jesus, I had no idea what to do next. Week in and week out, you, you'd have this new Christian looking up at... Now, you'll recognize this guy because he's at Senate and he gives a speech on the Senate floor too. So he had this basic, solid discipleship program. But of course, it's not just his discipleship program that was working. I mean, he's obviously also, and you'll see this with his speech at Senate, he's always also a great speaker. He's a very compelling pastor, very compelling evangelist. And so his classes wrote this overture that you know basically put out a bunch of the numbers that the christian reformed church is facing and in this addendum you know so here you have 
children, uh, baptized children, evangelistic growth. You would just have these numbers just falling since the 90s. And then you have classical statistics. And these classes, which in the mid-90s were at this point, 6,000, 7,000, a lot of them down 50%. California, Central California, not as bad. Um, I could look at the details of that. Hackensack had already tumbled. If you look, if you go back into the 1970s, I did this when I was a, a missionary on deputation in the 1990s in North Jersey. I was preaching and I, I wanted to talk about what had been happening with these numbers. And so actually, if you, if you compare Hackensack and Hudson, these are the classes that are in the New York, New Jersey area. They're a lot smaller than they were in the 1970s. A lot of this decline has happened, you know, even in a, even in some of the, well, anyway, so numerical, numerical decline. And so they wrote an overture and the overture basically said, we need to get really serious about this and there needs to be accountability and we want to see things change. So as I mentioned, what happens at Synod is these overtures come into Synod, they go into the advisory committee and the advisory committee pretty much pre-choose them. And often what happens is things sort of get blunted. It's also true that generally speaking, what comes out of the advisory committee is what passes on the floor of Synod. Well, every now and then something different happens and that's this story. I'm trying to think of which of these may be the shortest, and I'm, I can't make up my mind, so we'll just take it from the top. Uh, I said earlier that, we said earlier that the future is bright. Now he just said, I'm gonna, t I don't know which one will be shorter, so I'll take it from the top. Uh, be careful what you say. And yet, uh, we also face the reality uh, of Overture 12, that our, both our ministry leaders and uh, Classis US, Southeast US brings up. And so uh, you're going to hear in a moment our committee's response to that. Uh, but there's a lot of work to do. So uh, this is our rec these, are, these are our recommendations. One, that Synod in humility acknowledge as of grave importance the troubling trend of membership decline in the CRCNA, numerated in Overture 12, and our deep need to prioritize discipleship and evangelism by addressing individuals and communities holistically. Second, that Synod celebrate the work that Resonate and Thrive are already doing with churches and encourage Resonate and Thrive to collaborate with the churches so that the context, the churches can grow better in discipleship and evangelism in their context. That Synod celebrate the work of church renewal and planting already underway and that Synod celebrates significant growth in ethnic minority congregations. Third, that Synod with hope urge the churches to make use of resonate and thrive resources, coaching opportunities, and personnel, and that Synod encourage the churches to give careful thought to the responses from resonate and thrive to Overture 12 uh, listed there. Especially significant are six calls from resonate to the churches with a reference. And finally, that Synod thank Classis Southeast for their passion in highlighting the trend of membership decline in the CRCNA and our deep need for church renewal and church planting. We wanted to add a note as well, a final note, that Resonate and Thrive together with Calvin Seminary are already working with the churches to address the concerns brought up in Overture 12. As a result, we expect, and that was that last uh, part, we expect that additional resources will be needed for church renewal and planting in North America and, intention, and internationally. I'll just add a, a brief comment there uh, that we wanted to add that note so that it wasn't lost in the grounds. Uh, and we also wanted to make sure that, uh, to clarify that resources uh, are a lot more than just financial resources. We already talked about that uh, with uh, regard to changing church order and we're not suggesting any changes here, but we're not just talking money. And finally, five, that Synod consider this to be our response to Overture 12. And then one ground is listed in addition to the above rationale that we sense a high value for contextual ministry within the CRCNA rather than a top-down approach. Okay, now let's be fair to the advisory committee that it's really easy to become alarmist to see, oh, the sky is falling and we've got to do something. And so we put a lot of dramatic words on pages. We um, move a whole bunch of things. 
a lot of what's under this as well this isn't news to anyone we have resonate and we have calvin sam and you know this is in fact this has been a conversation that has been so slowly gaining momentum over the last few years and it's one thing to get all hot and bothered at a meeting like synod and then to leave it and to have nothing happen and these kinds of challenges don't lack for proposed solutions okay so and you're going to hear some of those in this uh, from the senate floor what we really need to start doing is praying more what we really need to start doing is preaching a certain way what we really need to start doing is implementing this problem this program what we really need to start doing is doing more social welfare things and then the people come what we really need to start doing is have better theological education what we really need to start doing is uh put the sacraments for and you know forefront what we really need to start doing is strict accountability what we so in other words there's a whole realm when you say here's the problem people rush forward and say i have the solution and okay and so synod usually says well there are a lot of people working on this and, and a lot of people trying a lot of different things. And so let's not sort of reinvent everything. Let's, there's already a lot of things going on. This obviously puts uh, people saying this kind of message in an awkward position. What are you, are you against survival and evangelism and discipleship? No, but we have yada, yada, yada. And, and you'll hear that in this debate. But again, what happened at Synod doesn't happen very often, but this is why you have Synod. All right, thank you for that. Do you want to take those one at a time, or do you want to take them as a whole? I want to take them as a whole, but we certainly, uh, someone always can move to a split. Okay, and that's just a little point where when you have a whole group of recommendations, you can take them as a whole, but if someone asks to split them up so you can deal with them in more depth, you can do that. That sort of keeps um, Synod working efficiently. So we'll take it as a whole unless someone wants to split the question. All you need, split the question. We're going to take them individually, like I just said. Uh, <laughs> our recommendation, starting with number one. Recommendation number one is in front of us. Any questions or comments? This is the recommendation you can see right on the screen in front of you. Just number one at this point. Any conversation or questions? Seeing none, all in favor of recommendation one, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, that carries. Brings us to recommendation two, already read for us. You can see it in front of you. Any questions? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, that carries. Number three. Again, you see it in front of you. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So as you can see, this is just sort of synod, sleepy way of, yeah, we, yeah, we know, we know, we trust, things are okay, we'll move it to the future. I didn't play the um, speech from the director, the new director of Resonate. That's the t-shirts that everyone is wearing. Um, you can go back and watch that yourself. It was a great speech, I thought. It was, it was a great speech. But here again, we, we trust the system. You know, we're not going to set our hair on fire. Just continue moving forward. All right. And number four. Recommendation number four. Any questions, comments? For those who are listening, that Synod thank Classes Southeast for their passion in highlighting the trend in membership decline in the CRCNA and our deep need for church renewal and church planting. And talks again about Resonate Thrive Calvin Seminary. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? And finally, recommendation five. And at this point, everybody's thinking, yeah, you know, this was an overture. The, we have a lot of overtures. We have a lot of things to do. We all know this is a problem. You know, stay the course. Four out of five. And then the last recommendation, five, is that consider, consider this our response to overture 12. And basically, by that point, you can lay the thing to rest. And this is where Reverend Vanderplug makes his appearance. 
excuse us a minute. Okay, they have they have to they have to they have to caucus a little bit. There's a question about procedure. It's it doesn't really have much to do with this. The the officers talk for a moment. They're they're just trying to get some other things in sequence down. Everybody takes a pause. Now it's it's Monday afternoon. They're just about to the break for dinner time. They have to take the Senate photo. There's a bunch of things that are going on. The officers are continuing to, to meet here. No big deal. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Uh, we, we just approved item four, and the reason we uh, caucus for just a minute is we had an amendment, or not an amendment, a motion that um, Scott wants to move before we get to item five. Oh, so... Scott, while he's watching all this thing go on, he sits down at his computer and types out something which essentially is what the overture was because he probably wrote the overture too. And so he just, maybe even just cut and paste it, just plop that in there. And then the executive is like, um, this, this, what you're trying to insert here is basically the overture and we just dealt with the overture. You can't do that. And Scott, the officers have a question for you, and sort of depending on your answer, we'll decide whether we move this now or take our break and so forth. To the officers, your motion looks a whole lot like the original overture, and you're just sort of asking us to go ahead and approve the main request of the overture, which is to have our general secretary uh, do all this work. Um, what's different about what you're asking than what the overture asked in the first place? I'm not sure my responses. But if you'll indulge me, then I'll at least give it a go. Give it test, a go. Test yourselves. Here he is. As, as the officers in the body of Zenid. So uh, just a few thoughts, if that's okay. First of all, very thankful for the work of the committee. I stopped and actually spoke to uh, the advisory committee. I was grateful that they received me. And uh, with regard to the first four things that we just passed, I wholeheartedly celebrate and hope, which is uh, what we just said that we did together. I actually am among those who are celebrating with most joy, uh, particularly with regard to the work of Resonate and its new director with regard to Thrive and uh, the work that it's done this last year. A lot of joy in the efforts that were made there. Um, and I'm excited about some of what we're hearing with regard to uh, the Consejo and other groups that are emerging in our denomination. Uh, I think that it would be uh, unwise for us to just simply pass by this before dinner. It's at least my opinion that this is the most important matter before Senate this year. Um, Did you hear that? Don't miss that. He's right. It's the most important matter before Synod this year. He's absolutely right. And if you've listened to my videos, we have all this drama about the same-sex marriage stuff. Well, this is a, this is a, an, oh, the CRC is, has COPD, it has heart disease, it has diabetes, and in some ways, the same-sex marriage thing is like covid and, well, people are like, same-sex marriage is going to kill the denomination. No, actually, um, it's the underlying comorbidities, words we all learned during the pandemic. Depending on what you do, I'd like to just point out the, the numbers. In less than 20 years, in fact, in 17 years, our membership's gone from 272,000 to 195. A third of our church is gone in 17 years. Uh, our baptisms, if you look, just in 2006, 20 years ago, we regularly celebrated about 3,800 baptisms. Today, it's half each year. Transfer growth, 2006, just 20 years ago, not quite 20 years ago, we welcomed 4,600 people by transfer. Today, 1,900, much less than half. Evangelism, uh, 2006, we welcomed 3,400 people by evangelism. It's almost four for every church. Last year, we welcomed 800 less than one for every church. And uh, having been part of the Christian Reformed Church for a long time, I know what we're good at, talking about things. And I know what we're not good at, taking action. Um, hey, I'm happy to say this in uh, the chapel of Calvin University, that I am a Calvinist. But let me tell you something. I think actually Jesus anticipated us Calvinists when he gave the parable of the talents, you know the parable of the talents, Landowner went away, there were five talents given to one, two talents to another, one to another. The five put theirs to work out, one five more. The two put theirs to work, one, two more. But the one, I think, is the warning to Calvinists. They had a high view of God, they combined it with a low view of ourselves, and they used that as an excuse for spiritual laziness. 
Calvinists have a high view of God. We tend to have a low view of ourselves. Uh, I believe we're a five-talent denomination. Our theology, our articulation of the gospel, the way we disciple people, we're five-talent people. We should not just pause here with talk. We have to do something. We have to have a concrete plan. And uh, I want to make sure I say this correctly because I'm not proposing that the weight of that land on our denominational staff. The weight has to land on us, the churches. But we need the help of our denominational staff to help coordinate us. This has to be a top priority. And that's why I'm urging us to take up my motion. Okay, thank you, Scott. I appreciate that. Here's what, here's what we're going to do. Um, Scott has submitted uh, a motion. Um, we have it up here in writing. When we come back from our supper break, we have to make a decision, and I'll have to talk with my officers. One way to do that would be to vote down number five and introduce a substitute motion, which would be Scott's. Another way to do that would be to consider this up front. So we, we have to think that through a little bit, but we'll be coming back to that after supper. So think about what Scott said and just note that there will be a, a motion in some way or another, uh, perhaps coming to the floor if you, if you uh, agree with that uh, motion. So what we're going to do now is... Okay, then they're going to go to supper. Now, those of you who want to change the world, those of you who want to move the Christian Reformed Church, Scott has given a master class in influence. He has been working on this for years. He is credible. He has an on-the-ground program. He has been um, sending overtures to Synod. This has been slow, steady pressure at Synod. Another overture this year. He met with the committee. He's not burning the house down. He's, you know, reaffirming all the good things he sees around him. I'm a loyal person. I'm faithful to the nomination. But this is what we need to do. And, you know, okay, well, and you might think, well, he just gave that lovely speech. That'll carry the day. Oh, no, we are not done yet. So now they've had dinner. They've had worship. They've tied up a bunch of loose ends. And now it's back to this, this thing, and it's Monday evening. Now, one of the things that's important to know about Senate is it, it is a marathon. These people, since they have gotten in last Thursday, have been working. They have been putting in probably anywhere from... 12 to 16 hour days working 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 and they're only halfway through and all of the big stuff is still ahead of them and so they've kind of got that behind them so there's this constant pressure to keep things moving and that constant pressure to keep things moving says you know well the real the real drama here is going to be about the uh the fight over same-sex marriage um to global missions uh advisory committee five and their report 5b we had passed motions one, two, three, and four, and then uh, Scott had sent us a motion that he wanted us to put in between four and five. In Scott's judgment, this motion um, had something new and perhaps different than what the committee had already considered. So we I'm not sure that I did. I don't think he thought that. I think he's just saying, no, um, I'm not having it. I'm going to keep moving forward. You're not going to dodge this. We thought we could add it, and then we could go to number five, which is to declare that this is our answer um, to Overture 12. So the officers talked about it. Um, the committee reporter and chair uh, talked about it. And we really think it's substantially the same as what the committee considered. And they're right. Scott spoke to the committee. And so had his case to uh, make there on behalf of his classes and the overture that was in front of the committee. And he did. The committee had all the other material to consider, um, including from some of our agencies and others in response to the overture. And yet they decided, and they did. decided not to go that direction. So essentially this motion would be to do something different than our advisory committee decided to do. So I'm going to rule um, that you can't just insert this motion in the middle of... A and Paul is absolutely right. ...a committee report. The only way to get to this motion, Scott, would be for us to vote down number five, which is, if we can bring this report up, it's report 5B, overture, uh, response, to, um, uh, response to overture 12. We already approved the first four, and now we're on number five, that Senate consider 
this to be our response to Overture 12. If you wanted to consider um, Scott's motion, or you're at least interested in looking at Scott's motion, which again, the officers as well as the reporter and the committee chair themselves judge as essentially. Um, now, now you wonder why he, Paul takes so much time repeating stuff. You really have to, because even though the delegates are all sitting there, there's just sort of a layer of resistance you have to get through. So it's, you got to be clear, you got to be clear, you got to repeat, you got to repeat, because you want to keep everybody on the same page. Asking for something that's different than uh, what the committee is recommending. I guess the parliamentary way to put it would be it's a substitute motion. It doesn't, you can't just drop it in with all the others. It really cancels out what the committee was intending. Hopefully parliamentary, that's all clear. If we act on number five and approve it, the matter is closed because that's our response to the overture. Um, if you want to hear Scott's uh, amendment, not amendment, Scott's motion, you would have to vote this down and then I would give the floor to Scott and he could make his motion, which again in the judgment of the officers is essentially what the overture was asking for uh, in the first place. We clear what, clear what I'm saying. If you have a question for clarification, please ask it. We have two speakers. I'm going to, we have Scott Vanderplug and Chad. And work, please ask your questions for clarity. Don't argue the point. All right. So he's saying if we vote down five, what happens to the response? The, the only reason for voting that down would be because you wanted to hear um, Scott's motion. Yeah. And Scott's motion is basically the overture that they've all read already. Is there any response to the overture at that point? Just procedurally? Then we would have to adopt a response to the overture. We'd yes. have to have a new motion. We'd have to come back to that. Okay, Correct. thank you. So, so again, as I said, the reason he repeats so often, because he just said all this twice, and then it's just it just takes a while to get through because everybody's got papers and computers. and we, we can't table five and go to Scott's thing? You could make a motion to table number five to go to Scott's. That would be another way to do it. You know, I'm just curious. I'm going to motion to table number five. Okay, this guy right here, remember I said we'd see him? He's that guy right there five years ago. Okay, so that's where, again, this master class on influence, know your disciples, set up this table, Get the whole thing. And even when you get a no, maybe don't always take no for an answer. Point of order. Just a moment, Dave. That I'm fine Sorry, with that. You know what? I wasn't in the queue. You are but we haven't even, no, we haven't even put number five on the floor yet. I'm just trying to explain what we're trying to do so everyone's clear here, all right? If you vote, I'll number see you five, it's let's okay. put number five on the floor. Would you do that, please, Adrian? Uh, yeah, yeah. so uh, our committee moved that Synod consider this, what we've already done before supper, to be our response to Overture 12. All right. The motion is now officially uh, on the floor before us. I have Chad and then Eric. At Chad Rickhoven, Classis, Minn Kota, and in light of what uh, David just suggested, I'm going to move that we table uh, number five at this point because I think we do need to address more of what we talked about earlier before the break uh, before we move on from this topic and look at this new motion. Okay, the motion on the floor is to table number five for the express purpose of considering uh, the overture at large. A reminder again that if you vote to table, then we would um, go to Scott's uh, motion, which the committee itself has already ruled is something completely different than the committee um, decided. Keep that in mind. A motion to table is not debatable. If you vote yes, we go to another motion. If you vote no, we go back to motion five. So we're not voting on motion five, we're voting on the motion to table. Everyone clear? All in favor of tabling, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. I, I, well, I'm not even going to tell you what I believe. <laughs> I believe that we are going to need to vote uh, electronically. 
You're going to vote yes or no. Please wait just a minute until I know we're ready for that vote. Someone give me a high sign when that's up. We're going to vote yes or no. We ready to do that, Lee? All right, you can vote yes or no, and the vote is to table. The vote yes to table number five to consider something else. Vote no if you want to consider number five. Yes or no? And then we wait. And then we wait. They'd been having internet trouble. We wait, we wait, we wait. Please make sure all of you vote and do so as quickly as possible. Raise your hand if you're having internet issues. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Friends, I warned you earlier, Committee 5 had all the excitement. <laughs> Someone can't help you. Keep your hand up so people can see and get to you. I know there's a lot of you, but... And we wait. Technical problems. More waiting. Thank you, everyone. Um, Lee is just telling me that we're they're frankly not exactly sure why the internet is so slow. It will eventually come up for you. Hopefully we can approve it through the night. But I'm looking at the numbers and we just hit a majority. I know some of you didn't get to record your votes, but we're already at a majority and the motion to table did not pass. Oh, Mr. Smith, he failed. The motion is defeated. The motion to table is defeated. <laughs> Which I guess we're all done. Scott had his mission, failed another year. Means we are back to number five on our screens. That Senate consider this to be our response to Overture 12. That motion is on the floor, and now the speaker queue is for those who wish to speak uh, to number five. Eric? So, so now again, if you defeat number five, in other words, Scott's motion isn't dead. Five can be defeated, but it was already determined not to table it. And so all of the signs would say, all of the signs would say, the, the advisory committee recommendation is gonna pass. Classes Hamilton. Classes Hamilton, um, I would request electronic voting on number five. We haven't even gotten there yet. You want an electric, you saw the way the last one went, right? I did, yep. I'm sorry, I'm just giving you a hard time. Yes, I will always honor a request I know, I for an electronic that. vote. So we'll have an electronic vote when we get to this. I have Scott Vanderplug and then Blake Campbell. No, we are not done yet. All right, Scott Vanderplug, class of Southeast US. So I'm standing to speak against the motion to that Senate consider this to be our response to Overture 12. Um, yeah, a couple of thoughts. First, uh, with regard to our times of worship, I think uh, even in our last singing and uh, reflection on Psalm 46, we're speaking about what we really believe about God, that even in the darkest times, the most difficult times, God's a refuge and his strength. Therefore, we will not fear. Um, undoubtedly, Perhaps in this room, uh, even I think this, I, I'm the person who's compiled all the statistics. And maybe there's an error where we say to ourselves, ah, oh, this isn't something we're good at. You know, when it comes to evangelism, this might not be something that we think is one of our strengths. But even though it might not have been, I believe it can be. The CRC is a denomination that believes in the gospel. And we believe in the sovereignty of God, a God who can turn things around, a God who's on a mission. And by the way, if we're Christians, then we're on a mission. Because Jesus said, go and make disciples. I at least have a dream that the Christian Reformed Church will start being known for something. We've been in search of an identity for a long time. And I think we ought to be known for the gospel of Jesus Christ the powerful gospel that can change lives. And we ought to be known as the church that carries out the Great Commission. We can do that better than anyone else. 
or as well as anyone else. So I think about God's command to Joshua. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Don't be discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. We shouldn't look at what's happened to our denomination and say, well, let's have a good discussion about it. Let's lament that we've been in decline. But we can celebrate that some good things are happening and we can hope for a better future. It's time that we said to ourselves, no, we've got to come together. And the purpose of this overture was to say to all of us, it's time to make this a top priority. There's a lot of things that people came here to talk about. I came for this. It's time that we as a church embraced that we have a unique role to play in the Great Commission. And there are people in the world who need us to step up. And um, we've got to come together. We have to have a plan to make this a top priority. We have to embrace this together. And uh, for that reason, I urge us to vote no on number five. Thank you, Scott. I have Blake from Ileana and then Timothy. Again, th this is a long shot at this point because you couldn't table number five. So now you're going to have to rally the troops to vote it down. But don't count that speech out. From Hudson and then Chad and Workham from Minn Kota. We have left Timothy, Chad, and John. The question has been called. Yes, sir. Your point of order, or I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. You. Okay, yeah, we'll trust you on that. So we have a fourth person. I've also been trying to get in the queue for like two minutes. And my queue will not respond. If you're trying to get into the queue, don't lie. <laughs> uh, but didn't have the opportunity. Raise your hand, and we'll honor that. So I'm hearing it from Dave. And raise your hand, so I can. We'll just manually get you on the list. So we have five people on the queue. The question has been called. Again, remember, calling the question means discussion ends. Just those who are on the list get to speak, and then we'll vote. All in favor of calling the question, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. That motion carries. But so listen how many people still want to talk about this. We have Timothy, Chad, John, and then we'll catch uh, the two who didn't get in the queue. Hudson, um, so I'm speaking against this motion. Uh, so I serve a church in New Jersey. And if it's my ability as my church to grow is based on my ability to bring in Dutch immigrants, well, then my church is not going to grow. We can't grow our churches just by adding to people we already have here, because that's not an option. And if we look to the canons of Dort, one of our great confessions, it does not let us off the hook about our evangelistic purposes. We cannot take this seriously enough, or you will find that this denomination will no longer exist. Please, take this seriously. Do you want this church 10 years, 20 years? Do you want to reach the lost with the gospel? Do you want to save people from condemnation? I believe we do. So I say, take this seriously. Thank you. Chad, then John. Chad, this is Minkota. You've heard this phrase before, likely. If we keep doing what we've been doing, we're going to keep getting what we've got. We have to take a serious look at our operations when we look at the numbers that have been presented to us here tonight. This must be our top priority, as was said before. It is neat and fascinating to hear about all of the different things that we've been doing as a denomination, and they are good things. But one thing, as I look at what's been presented to us in all of these different reports, one glaring thing that I see missing is a strong emphasis on the proclamation of God's word. We are not encouraging our people to expository preaching anymore the way that we need to. And that is something, if we want to read... Now, remember what I said about... Here's the dilemma. Everybody has a solution. Well, that can fragment, but that can also unite. Juvenate this denomination that we have got to do. So I don't even know what's in this motion that's coming, but I know it's better than what we've got. And we at least need to consider it. So I strongly encourage this body to vote down number five. That's not a slight on the committee that put this work together. It's just a uh, realization that we have got a serious problem and have got to do something about it now. Thank you. Harold, and then it's going to be Nate from Lake Erie. Nathan? Yes. Uh, we already spent hours and hours talking about this thing in our committee. We, we were talking about numbers. We were talking about the, everything that is changing now. The thing is that if, if we, already, if we are only thinking about the growing for Anglo people. It's not going to work. All of the, all of the uh, traditional churches are declining. It's not only CRC. It's, uh, uh, all of the churches, all of the, uh, the, the uh, churches are, are, are declining, you know. But the thing is that uh, Something is changing in our denomination anyway. Some, some, some people is growing. Kevin said, for example, last week, the meeting of, of the planters, half of them Latinos, 25% other ethnicities, only 25% Anglos. Something is happening. 
But the thing is that if we have only the vision that we have to grow in only one way, we're going to lose the time. This is not the way. We need to see what is happening. There's something is happening here. When I came to the, for the first meeting to the COD six years ago, when I was reading the list of the names over there, I found beside my name one mark, one asterisk beside my name. And I said, oh my goodness, I, I'm special over here. Who is, who, who, who is special in this list? Stanley Young, oh, the Native American, oh, he's special. Oh, the black people, oh, no, we are not special, we're different. We need to have one mark beside to, my, to our names because we're different in this denomination. Six years ago, now we are changing. Something is happening. Now we have more inclusion. We are growing in diversity. We are growing understanding the different cultures. So we are not declining everything. We are declining in numbers, but probably we are growing in different ways. So we need to understand this. The Lord is doing something, and probably we are going you know, against the things that the Lord is doing. So we need to see. You know, we, we already talk about this, this kind of thing. We already spent hours talking about this, 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 this thing, but the, the, the thing is that can we have, can we have a, a, you know, the opportunity to open the, the, the eyes and to see the world view different, for example? Are we ready to change? Are we ready to give more opportunity to, to other people, for example? Are we willing to work in our classes in different ways, for example? Yes. He said, if nothing changed, nothing changed. Yeah, that, that's right. But uh, something is changing. The thing is, are we ready for this? So that's, that's the kind of thing. We are doing everything that we can do. Thank you, Harold. But at the same time, we need, to know, we need to know what the Lord is doing. And I think he's doing something very important for us. Thank you, Harold. Nathan and then David, and then we're going to vote. Nathan Grunewald, Classes Lake Erie, uh, also on Committee 5. And just wanted to say that this overture does portray the reality of the problem. And we all agree, and it's dire, and we need to do something. The challenge of the committee that we face, one of the challenges, is that the grounds, uh, or the, the recommendations laid out on page 390, compared to the gravity of the problem, wouldn't make a great deal of a dent in what needs to be done. So as I, I listened to my brother here, we need a massive vision. We have a problem, but the, the, the recommendations that we were given just don't feel big enough to make a dent in what we need to do. And so I want us to hear the, the pain and the weight, but also say that unless we want to spend two days crafting a motion that does include the growing edge of the CRC, thinking about minority congregations and how to bring them in, and, and paint a vision that's much, much bigger, we cannot work with what's in this overture to match the gravity of the problem with where we need to go. So we need much, much more time. And for that reason, for now, I'm in favor of the motion at hand. Thanks. Thank you, Nathan. David. David Bosher, class of Thornapple Valley. Um, I'm kind of surprised I'm doing this and even more surprised why. I'm going to speak against the motion. And um, here's why. I, oddly enough, I, I think that making a floor motion is roughly the worst way to get things done around here. Remember, this is the same guy who was in his video about his discipleship program. Um, and it's weird that I would be interested in one, but bear with me for a second. Um, I've watched, you know, I'm, I'm a millennial, and I've watched the majority of the friends that I grew up with at a Christian school turn away from Christ, so, some in such a hostile way that they will not speak to me anymore for the simple reason that I'm a minister of the word. There are others in this room who have had the same experience. Now, um, when I hear a guy here, <laughs> we're not allowed to lord it over people when we're pastors of bigger churches, so I'm going to speak up for somebody else. Uh, a lot of you know Scott over there. Um, and years ago, uh, he started training me personally in evangelism and discipleship. Ever since then, a lot of the people I couldn't find traction with, I, there is not a moment in my ministry anymore where I don't have somebody who's a new Christian or investigating it on my porch talking weekly. And um, I wouldn't have the tools to be able to do, I mean, I had the will to do it. But the guy over there is the guy who had the insight and the skills and the gifts of God to actually deploy me. And I'm actually seeing these people come back to Christ. Um, namely, people I went to school with. Now, um, here's the deal. Our denomination on the whole is no good at evangelism. And so one of the only guys that I know who's actually knocking it out of the park into the impossible by helping a fool like me wants to stand up and make, make a motion thinking it'll help, I kind of want to listen. So uh, that's probably not a very good ground. It might not be sufficient for you to listen to me, but there it is. Thank you, David. We have motion five in front of us. An electronic ballot was asked for, so we are going to vote yes or no on number five. That Senate consider this to be our response to Overture 12. Yes means you're in favor of number five, that Senate consider this to be our response to Overture 12, and that this refers to the four motions that we passed just before dinner. Yes or no? And we, we know there's going to be internet issues. It's just slow. At least that was the word I got from Lee. Now there's no internet, Lee. I'm asking you if you want us to continue to work on the problem or whether you'll accept a voice vote. 
Say it. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Um, the electronic vote request, but in good faith that the electronic vote will start working in future motions. Yes, okay. I, thank you for that. I hear you, Eric. It's just, it's just coming up, I'm hearing. So let's do the electronic vote because to Eric's point, we can't have another several days of this, or at least we hope we won't. So it's up now. No, it's back down. So here's what we're going to do, folks. Bear with me here. Stay with me here. Clearly, we have a problem that we need to fix, but let's do a voice vote on this. Oh, the drama. Yes, and see if we get a... Oh, we are getting votes. Keep trying, folks. Forgot because it was so long. We're voting on number five. Yes or no on number five. Yes or no on number five. The motion was defeated. The motion was defeated. You didn't want to table it. Apparently, you wanted to defeat it. <laughs> Seems like very similar motion. So, Scott, deliver us. Deliver us, my friend. Come to the microphone, and if we have that motion from Scott, can we bring that up? And uh, the Mr. Smith moment. And I'll entertain that motion from Scott. Go ahead and read it to us. We'll get it up on the screen as soon as we can. All right, Scott Manor, Blue Class of Southeast U.S. Thank you, Mr. President. So uh, I move that Senate instruct the Office of the General Secretary to work with the Council of Delegates, each agency, as well as churches and classes, to develop a comprehensive, unified strategy and plan to arrest and reverse the trend of decline and bring about a positive trend line of membership growth to our denomination. Second, that Senate instruct the Office of General Secretary to work with the Council of Delegates, each agency, as well as churches and classes, to continually update this plan and to report its progress regarding this plan to Synod annually until such time as Synod decides that this issue has been satisfactorily addressed. Thank you. Excellent, there we go. We have the motion that Scott just made. Is that supported? All right, again, for those of us who get easily confused, which includes me, um, we've really been discussing this since just before dinner, right? We've had a considerable discussion on tabling and then to defeat. Now we're finally to the motion that Scott wanted to make, which I assume was our intention. And it was substantially the overture that the advisory committee sort of said, tut, tut, tut. Uh, by voting down number five. So this motion is now on the floor. That Senate instruct the Office of General Secretary to work with the Council of Delegates, each agency, as well as the churches and the classes, to develop a comprehensive, unified strategy and plan to arrest and reverse the trend of decline and bring about a positive trend line of membership growth in the denomination. That Senate instruct the Office of General Secretary to work with the Council of Delegates, each agency, as well as churches and classes, to continually update this plan and to report its progress regarding this plan to Senate annually until such time as Senate decides that this issue has been satisfactorily addressed. That is the motion that is on the floor. I have a speaker's list that has been building here. We have Chad, Brandon, and Daniel. Chad from Minkota, Brandon from Granville, and then Daniel from Chicago. Please make your way to the mic when you think you're next up. We begin with Chad and then Brandon. And Nakoda, I do appreciate the comments were made, that were made earlier that this is a complex issue and, and hard to get our heads wrapped around. But on the other hand, this should not be that difficult because we do have churches in this denomination that are growing and that are healthy and are strong. And by and large, those are churches that have remained committed to the ordinary means of grace. Spend some time. Go to those churches. We just were at one this past Sunday in Sparta. It's booming there. Figure out what they're doing and bring it to the rest of us so we can replicate it. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. Remember to speak clearly for or against the motion. Thank you. I'm going to speak in favor of the motion. Um, and, here you, and here you were, David, thinking that your speech didn't convince anyone. Um, I appreciate this, this emphasis on evangelism and mission. Um, I do have reservations about membership being our metric for whether or not we're succeeding in that, simply because we live in a post-Christian and secular society that is going to become more post-Christian and more secular. That said, I would like to see us as a denomination focus on evangelism and mission. Um, so I'm going to speak in favor of this, and I think that this would be good work for us to pursue as a denomination going forward, just maybe with some different metrics other than membership. Thank you. I have Daniel from Chicago South, and then Gabriel from Hackensack, and then Harold from uh, Classes, California. 
uh, Dan Roder from Chicago South, as was already said. Um, I'm, a, I'm the son of missionaries. I'm the son of a zealous Southern Baptist mother who brought me up to evangelize everybody within sight. And I'm going to speak against this motion. Over the course of my life and my ministry, everything really has been aimed at bringing people to Christ. The techniques have gone on and on and on. First, you were to make friends with people. Then you were to have seeker services. Then you were to have to have crusades. Then it was going to be promise keepers. On and on and on, technique after technique after technique. We heard here tonight that 12 years of Christian education just not, did not do it. Apparently, not enough information. The name of Jesus wasn't spoken often enough. The gospel apparently wasn't presented that whole time. And so, uh, I, you know, let's be careful about one more technique. What I oppose in this motion is the top-down approach. We've been throwing everything at the office of the general secretary. Please figure out from the top what it's like. I like the idea, okay, if things are going well in Sparta, go over there. Take a group from your church there. This needs to be a congregational effort. This is the call of Jesus. It's the fundamental one. We don't need a huge study committee or to add something else to our brother over there. Thank you. Thank you. I have Gabriel from Hackensack, then Harold, and then Elizabeth from Grand Rapids East. Yeah. My name is Gabriel from uh, Class of Hackensack. Um, I really intended to go through all the synod without talking, but here I am. Um, I, I really, so I, I think it's really about relationships, right? And, and it's about coming back to the Word, and, and I think a brother said it, just really digging deep in the Word and understanding how God is calling us to, to disciple. And that's through relationships. And I, I just don't, this is okay, it just doesn't do it for me because of what the other brother said with regard to, the, to membership. I'm not calling people to membership, I'm calling them to, to discipleship, to come to know Christ. And I know we all know that. Um, but I also, wanna, I also wanna say that, yes, the numbers are decreasing and there's reasons for that, right? Um, but Jesus had his numbers decrease too. Um, John 6, 6 is one of, John 6, 6, 6, is one of the, uh, the, the most saddest uh, verses, I think, in the, in the Bible, and it says this, after this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. And why? Because he spoke truth to them, and he loved them with truth, um, and he was not afraid to, to walk with them and, and, and show them the, the true way of the kingdom. And so we, have to, we can't be afraid to do that um, and walk in grace and truth. Thank you very much. I have Harold, then Elizabeth, and then Drew from Classis Muskegon. Uh, when, uh, in our meeting, Chris, say something that is true. Uh, we can define as, as a denomination, we can design any kind of strategy. We can design any kind of things, but at the end, the responsibility is at, in the local church. And we can force to the local church to do whatever we design. So at the end is the responsibility for every church. So I don't see any kind of difference between this proposal and the work that Resonate and the other agencies are doing now. So I don't see any kind of difference. Probably SAC needs need something, something else to do. Thank you, Harold. Elizabeth, and then Drew, and then William from Classis Ileana. Elizabeth Vanderhagen, Classis East. I speak against this motion. Um, Resonate and Thrive have resourced us well, and I believe that this happens from the local congregation, not from the top down. Thank you, Elizabeth. We have Drew now, and then William, and then um, Gay from Lake Superior. Thank you, Mr. President. Drew Sweetman, Classis Muskegon. I speak in favor of this motion uh, because I believe that it uh, provides us with a plan that goes across our entire denomination. It goes beyond our agencies to our educational institutions, to our churches, and to our classes. And so I think it's a very uh, widespread um, effort across the entire denomination. And I believe it also creates some accountability that is badly needed. Thank you, Drew. I have William, and then Gay, and then David from Thorn Apple. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Bill Seatsma from Classes Ileana. I request we call the question. Um, so the question has just been called. We have, I think, 12 speakers in the queue. If you vote yes, it freezes it right there, and then we vote. If you vote no, we continue to add names to the queue. We're all clear by now what we're voting on. All those in favor of calling the question, say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. All right. It's perfectly acceptable to withdraw your name from the queue as well. Gay, David, and then Tara from Hamilton. Hello, my name is Gay. I'm from Classes Lake Superior from Bridgewood Church in Savage, Minnesota. Um, I wandered in as a very broken woman to Bridgewood Church, and I heard this wonderful preacher. His name is Arland Copendrayer. <laughs> and I met Christ. I grew up Lutheran. I didn't get it. And then, and then when you're confirmed, how old are you? Like 13, 14, 15? And I was boy crazy like you would not believe. There were so many cute boys in confirmation that I didn't pay attention. 
And so I just didn't get it. And uh, then that day, as a very broken woman, to meet Jesus Christ in a CRC church and to hear teaching and uh, the, the catechism, this is gorgeous. And so I, I, want, I think of all the other broken women and men who are in your communities and who need to meet Christ. You know, Romans 5, 8, when my kids were little, my daughter Jenny, who is now 29, I sat down with her for Awanas and we were going over Romans 5, 8. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Come on, Jenny, you can do it. You can do it, Jenny, come on. While we were yet sinners. She was four. We don't talk like that in our house, right? While we were yet sinners. She got her, took a deep breath and looked at me with those big blue eyes and she said, okay, mommy, when we were wild sinners, Christ died for us. And I said, some of us more than others, Jenny, some of us more than others. And I think of those people who so desperately need Jesus. And so I am in support. Thank you. Thank you very much. David, Cara, and then Derek from Classes Ontario, Southeast, Southwest. Hey, everybody, me again. Um, I'd like to, none of you are surprised, I want to speak in favor of the motion. And uh, I'd like to answer a couple of things. Uh, you know, I, I hear this, and I, I've heard this kind of talk from a lot of us before, that, you know, it's not within our power to reverse the decline, if that's what's to happen in our time. And, and Jeremiah ministered faithfully his whole life. He didn't see a single convert. And it's true that if the Holy Spirit doesn't bring somebody to himself, it's not going to happen. And it may well be that the plan for our time is a time of thinning out and purifying of the church or however you want to. It is entirely possible that no matter what we do, we will still see the decline of the church in the West. And it's true that what's happening to us is happening to almost everybody, vir virtually everybody in the West as far as churches are concerned. No one would contend with that. And uh, if the numbers as they stand currently continue... Uh, when my generation entered ministry, most of us did so with clear eyes, knowing that by the time that we retire, there might not be much of a church left. And that the idea that we're getting paid full time for ministry in the beginning, that we better invest well now, because that might not be the case when we retire. All that is true. And maybe there's nothing we can do about it. But the, the question is, if we're to go down, do we want to go down with our full focus on seeing if there's anything that we could have done to serve our Lord better, to make ourselves more useful, and perhaps see God do something through us. I think that's the best way to glorify him. And if we are to shrink, if we are to fall, fine, so be it. But I would really like to know that it was our full focus and our first priority and our full attention on it all the way down to the glory of God. And who knows, maybe when the spirit shows up, we might just be ready and catch a wave. But if we're not ready to articulate the gospel in every way as best as we possibly can with every ounce of strength, then uh, I just don't know how that happens. Thank you, David. Tara, and then Derek, and then Catherine, one of our ethnic advisors. I'm Kara DeHaan from Classes Hamilton. I'd like to speak against the motion. As was pointed out already, we have Resonate and Thrive. And for the last five years, I've been privileged to sit on the oversight committee of the Resonate Global Mission. And I've got to hear three times a year of the ways they are growing the church. We heard Kevin speak about the, the future being bright before dinner. And that is true. Resonate is on the ground, growing church plants, equipping leaders to be in witness with the communities around them. And so I want to point out that before dinner, we, recommend, we accepted a recommendation that uh, we take a look at what Resonate is doing. And so especially uh, recommendation three was to look at six calls from Resonate in their response to the original overture from Classes Southeast. And I'll just highlight that they are looking for our commitment they need us to join us in prayer. This is not just an agency. This is not a task force job. This is every single person job. So read this. Join in prayer. Be a church willing to become a parent church for church plants. Participate in committing to identify, developing, and releasing missional leaders. Commit to extend hospitality and welcome to the people of diversity, to our neighbors, to church plants and leaders. Be a congregation, be part of a congregation who's willing to share the use of your building to who, who's even willing to start over as a church plant as your congregation comes to an end. And also finally, join with Resonate in the hard work of searching hearts and inviting the Holy Spirit to search our lives. Don't let this urgent thing just fall to pieces as we continue with the work of synod. This work is important, but Resonate 
as well as Thrive, are doing this work and need us to work alongside them. Thank you. Thanks, Kara. I have Derek, and then Catherine, and then Andrew from Arizona. Hi, Derek. Uh, Delia from Classes Ontario Southwest. Um, I speak in favor of the motion, uh, actually for a lot of similar reasons that my friend Kara pointed out, um, because I feel, like especially the second half of it, it's trying to enhance the work of Resonate and Thrive and the things that are already going. I think if you are here this week, you probably care a lot about evangelism already, but uh, as a pastor in the church, I encounter a lot of people that would never come here who they don't even think about evangelism. Evangelism is like, outreach is like the extracurricular activity that you can choose to do in school to them. And I feel like if we get reports regularly put to our churches reminding them that Resonate is doing really good work, we need to do those things, that might just show them that it's not an extra thing. It is the mission. That's why we follow Jesus, disciples making disciples. So that's why I speak in favor of the motion. Thank you. Catherine, and then Andrew, and then uh, Gerard from um, Arizona. I don't have voting power, but I do want to uh, encourage everybody to consider this motion in front of us. And I'm not speaking against Resonate or Thrive, because and then in the end, we may agree that Thrive and Resonate would be the best parties to take a lead in delivering this, um, this plan that we're going to develop. The reason why I want to speak is because I sense and a lot of ambivalence and pessimism in the room. And I would like us and then to look at this from a strength-based approach. If you look at this chart, there is a lot of decline in membership. But then if you look at Florida, they have 2% increase. If you look at COAM that just joined CRC in 2014, they have 75% increase. And for some, a couple of other classes, there was only 1% or 2% decrease. Let's don't be so hard on ourselves. And I belong to a Toronto CRC uh, uh, classes. And there are some churches, including my own churches, that has a major decline. But I've also gone to other churches in the suburbs, like Bowmanville and Richmond Hill, etc. They were doing very well. And we can always learn from them. And let's don't just keep the learning within the classes. Let's do across classes, across the continent. We don't have to go to our relatives, our relatives like other churches and denominations to learn, although it's good to learn from them. We have a lot of things that we can learn from each other here. And this is why I want to speak up. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Andrew, Gerard, and then Jason from Wisconsin, and that's the list. Andy Littleton, Classes Arizona. My friend's name is Jared. He, ever since childhood, he's been, you know, Gerard and stuff. So just, um, but uh, I, I don't need, I don't, I don't mean to speak against. Andy's been on the channel. You can find him. The motion. Actually, I really do appreciate um, the the sense of urgency around these numbers and the general uh, considerations. The one thing that does um, strike me slightly as off is that our metric is membership growth only. Um, I think that there are certain situations in which doing exactly what we ought to do to be faithful to the gospel and the scripture will indeed cause people to not choose to be in our churches. Um, I believe that in our context, we have seen, um, we've seen even this year, conversions of people from atheism and other religions, but at the same time, many people pass us by due to teaching the scriptures and the basics of the gospel. I think we need to look at faithfulness. I think we look, need to look at our willingness to sacrifice. We saw how many hands went up for how many of us need to be paid full time. Sometimes to reach people, you need to be willing to let go of something that gives you comfort and wealth. We have to let go of not only the, you know, it's not just strategizing, it's not just resources. Sometimes we have to go to hard places and do difficult things. Sometimes we have to find new paths and we need to raise up leaders that cannot get degrees and we need to send them off because they are evangelizing and bring them in. Many of the most powerful evangelists in my context don't know how in the world to operate in a room like this. And so I just want to encourage that I, everything in this, I believe we should be doing as far as focusing on growth and evangelism, but it is foolish to believe that to do it will only come through measuring membership growth. Thank you very much, Andy. Jared and then Jason. Hello, uh, Jared McDaniel from Classes Arizona. You can call me whatever you want, I don't mind. Um, so I, I, I will be honest with you, I'm hesitant to be up here after everyone has said what they have, um, but I, I was in this group and one of the things that I shared is uh, I'm, I'm an outsider here. I didn't grow up in the CRC. I've been a part of a church that joined three years ago. I didn't even grow up in the faith. And the thing is, you guys can talk all you want about strategy, but unless you were actually in bars, in gay clubs, in places where sinners are, it doesn't matter. Like this church will die, this church will die if we are not willing to love people where they are and invite them into our homes despite 
their worldview. Like, I'm not even necessarily in favor. Now, Rod Hugan has also been on the channel, and these guys come from Arizona. And Rod, I've told the story of Rod a little bit. Um, Rod, we grew up CRC. Uh, he's, he's, uh, he's related to two of my seminary profs. His family moved to, told his story on my channel, his family moved to Arizona because his father had health issues, and then his father died when, when, Rod, was, um, when Rod was young. Rod, Rod's an enormous man. Um, he worked in business for a while, felt a call to ministries, had ups and downs, uh, was, was going to try to be a church planter. He was terrible at it. He was a terrible church planter. And so he just didn't have too much long on here. At that point, there was denominational funding for too long. For, and he was just, he wanted to give all the money back and say, I'm, I'm a failed church planter. And the, his, um, his local rep said, well, oh, just, that'd be such a pain to turn all this around. Just, just do something positive for the next while. Uh, just go bless some people. And so he bumps up into a Baptist pastor and they become friends and they share their vision of what a church would be like. And so they, they found the village in Tucson, Arizona. And it's, an, it's different from churches. That's eventually when they got a building because someone offered them like $300,000 of matching grants or something like that. So they're able to buy a building and they filled it with used furniture. It's all full of comfy chairs and sofas, and they always have a communal meal. And Rod started that church by just inviting people to his house to have dinner, all kinds of people, and loving on them. And the village started, and then, and then Rod and I were both on the home missions board, and we would meet together in Grand Rapids. We were both you know, heavily jet-lagged, and so we'd just drag ourselves to the meetings at 8 a.m. because that's when the Calvinists start their meetings. And then by, you know, by 10 o'clock at night, we're, you know, we're just starting to wake up. And so he and I would go out and we'd go to Denny's and we would just sit and talk and we became close friends there. And he saw how we were sort of attracting young uh, church planters to Sacramento to plant churches. And he wanted to do the same things with Tucson. It just didn't work at all. And so he just had to give up on that whole vision. And then sure, wouldn't you know, God brings Andy Littleton to him and bit by bit by bit. And they have this wonderful, glowing, growing cluster of struggling churches in Tucson that just major on loving each other and feeding each other and doing life together. And uh, that's the group that this guy comes out of. Favor of this measure or against this measure. I think it's fine. However, coming up with strategy is not going to, just merely coming up with strategy is not going to proclaim Christ. I was 21 years old and studying Buddhism when Christ entered into my life. Like, it is the Holy Spirit working through people who are willing to engage with people who disagree with them and invest in them and invite them over for dinner. That is how we grow the church. And I just want to close with this, Jesus' own words in John 13. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. That's the work. So either pass this motion or don't pass this motion. But go home and love people and invite them into Christ, not merely with doctrine. Invite them into Christ with how you love them. Thank you, Jared. Now, part, part of the reason I've sort of let this run and I haven't interrupted it with commentary is because, as many of you know, on my channel, I have these randos conversations. And if you go to the conversations playlist, some of the people are a little bit famous and they've written books and such. Some of those people are Christian reform people, but most of those people are randos. They're people that have found me on the internet and they've come to me and they've wanted to have a conversation. And right here at Synod, these are the randos at Synod. You know, some of them are pastors and they have churches, yada, yada, yada. Some of them are elders and deacons or uh, young adult representatives. Phlebas noticed that I, I didn't include the, the great young adult representative speech about uh, the marriage thing. I should have got that. It was getting late last night. I had to end the video. Um, but I just wanted to let the, the, the woman who told, got up and told her story uh, told her story about being boy crazy, this guy from Tucson. These are the randos at Synod. And, um, you know, it, it's, are they for this motion? Are they against this motion? You know, okay. But God bless these randos.
Jason, and then our general secretary will speak and will vote. Uh, Jason Rice, Classes Wisconsin. I, I speak in favor of this motion um, for all of the reasons that I've heard for and against the motion. Because of the words comprehensive and unified, a plan doesn't negate that this is a movement that happens at a local grassroots level. I would hope that our plan would, re would work, would be a plan of a local grassroots level. A plan doesn't mean that we're not encouraging our churches to go into the bars and the clubs to preach the gospel. I'm doing that with my congregation every single week, telling them to love sinners and call them to repentance and speak the truth. We, we have this idea that we have to either love them or speak the truth, and I have seen the opposite of that. I, I was a youth pastor for 11 years. 60% of our youth group was unchurched kids. And, and I remember speaking to a group of kids who I had to discipline every week because they were locking kids in trunks and driving their cars. And, and I was having to suspend them from youth group for a week because of swearing and cussing at my leaders. And I said, why are you here? You could do this at the park and you wouldn't be yelled at every week. And they said, because you're speaking about things that nobody else is speaking about and we love you, and you love us. It's not one or the other. And my desire is that a unified strategy would not be dumping it on the office of the general secretary, but would be creating something that would bubble up from the bottom up and would encourage us to bring the gospel into our communities. That's why I speak for this motion. Thank you, Jason. Go ahead, Zach. Yes, I'm Zachary King, I'm the general secretary, and um, my job is to do what Synod tells me to do, so I don't speak against or for the motion. I do want to make a pastoral comment, however. As you're voting for this motion, this is me, me speaking to you in my role as a pastor to the churches. I hope that as you think about this, that we'll all want to dig back into the core of this issue, and that is God changing us, and us coming to repentance, and to continued growth in the love and knowledge of God, and the love for hurting people. Because if we don't do that, I fear that many of our efforts will be walking in the same direction that we've walked for many years. And I know that God wants to renew us. I know that God wants to restore us. I know all of those things God wants to do. And I know that we as a people need to make space for that. So that is my pastoral comment. Thank you. Thank you very much. One of the things I really like about Zach King is he is a, he is a sort of a regular guy. I, I got to know him last year a little bit because I had, I had dinner with him because I had interview him, and just like I do with my randos, it's like, now nah, I need to know a little something about you before we get up on stage and talk to one another. And I, I love I love the Senate moment because in some ways, this is you're, you're seeing here the heart of the church. And yes, there's a motion on the floor, and yes, people are going to be voting one way or another, but you know what? And if you listen to all the speeches, they all sort of want the same thing. And yeah, you put this idea out there and there's a hundred different ways to go about it. This week I'm preaching on 1 Corinthians uh, 12 and 13 and 14, mostly 12, I think. If you know the passages, you know why. But, you know, God has this body and he's got all these different critters in it and he works in different ways and they got their own ideas and they got their own thinking and they do this or they do that, but uh, God, is, God is working and his will will be done. Zach. All right, the motion is in front of us. Question's been called, so there's no more list. You can see it. We've had lots of discussion on this. I'm gonna ask for a voice vote. All of you in favor of the motion in front of you, say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. That motion carries. Mr. Smith won. <laughs> I'd like to suggest to the body that we really need now um, before we pray, and we're going to do that in just a moment, uh, we want to pray for the churches, our evangelism effort, uh, for those who come to the faith through our ministries. Um, but to just wrap this up, I really need someone from the floor uh, to make a motion that we declare this. That'd be one, two, three, four, and five. That motion that was defeated had to be, because tabling it, that wasn't good enough. It had to be defeated. Now we have to bring that same motion back to the floor to wrap this up which this now becomes um, as our answer uh, to the overture. It's moved and supported. Everyone clear on what we're doing? We, we just voted on it. Or you mean it's really fun to think about the fact that most of the members of my church don't watch most of my videos. 
but some of them might watch this one and when they see that guy behind the microphone that paul devries they're going to remember that little boy that ran around the churchyard and lived in the parsonage and this is just part of what god does i mean on this we can't redo a vote you got to ask before we vote or are you challenging the chair you don't think i heard it right The way to do that is to challenge the chair, because you're essentially saying, I got it wrong, which is fine. Your ch the ch chair has been challenged. Oh, no! Mr. Smith might lose! <laughs> so the chair has been challenged on his ruling on that vote. So what we will do now is we will vote yes to sustain the chair, vote no to uh, go against the chair. So this is a debatable matter, so you can join the speaker queue if you would like which is open now. I know this, is, this gets confusing, but we are voting on the chair's activity. So he, yes is a sustain, no is a defeat. So I don't see any speakers in the queue. So we're gonna vote on sustaining the chair. Is it a point of order? Do you like to do an electronic vote? We can do an electronic vote. All right, are we ready for with all the problem they've had with the electronic vote? Back to this. Electronic vote. Richard says yes. So yes is with the chair. No is a right. No is saying is sustained. So he will, when he's done talking, take back this podium. Mr. Smith wins. So the chair is sustained. So, uh, Paul, can I just make a comment? This is Adrian. Pardon? I think, I think this is still my committee report. Can I make a comment? Please. I know, you, I know you've all forgotten about me. That, that, That's okay. That already was a comment, but you yeah. can make another one too. Uh, I told our committee at the beginning of our uh, time together, was that two weeks ago, I think, um, that uh, my job was to listen well and to try to represent what our committee did, and then uh, to go to the floor and listen, continue to listen well. Um, so I, I just... Uh, I've heard and, and appreciated and just, we already said thank you to Classes Southeast. We're about, I think, to declare this our response. I hope, please, please do folks. I don't want to be up here all night. Um, but I just, I just want to say, I, I, yeah, I would encourage all of us to listen well because um, uh, we've got a big task ahead of us. Um, and, uh, and I want to end just by saying thank you to Scott um, for continuing to call our denomination to, uh, to discipleship and mission. Um, that's clearly a deep, deep priority for all of us in this room. And uh, clearly we all have very strong feelings about how we do that. Um, and so, yeah, one, one of the theologians I love says that we do not always please God, but our desire to please God pleases him. And so, uh, yeah, thank you. And, and please, uh, please do make motion five. Thank you very much. So the motion is that we consider this to be our response to Overture 12. So four motions we passed before dinner, plus Scott's motion. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, that motion carries. Excellent. There it is. There it is. So, yep, uh, dreams do come true. We'll see where it all goes, but um, this was certainly a moment to remember in this synod.